No job is forever. You either get fired or you quit. And when you're talking about giving 110%, which I completely agree, and I think that focusing on doing the best work possible is a critical part of this, yeah. but it can sometimes feel at odds with a lot of the conversations that we're having about self-care and trying to avoid burnout. So my question to you is, how would you suggest an individual both work towards having as much of an impact as possible and doing their best work while also taking care of themselves so that they can continue to move forward. Nobody works 110% of the time, 110% of the time. And I think that's a really important distinction to make. When you think about the highest functioning people in your organization, your, you know, your CEO, if that person is terrific, or head of sales or whomever, head of human resources, or even just an HR specialist, those individuals are really good at doing something I like to call time blocking. It's an old school technique where they are the owners of their calendar and they know what they need to do every morning when they get to work they've got it scheduled on their calendar they don't mess around they don't take the dip in dip out meeting they have enough character and enough self-leadership that when someone pops in their office they can say you know what i hear you let's make a time to talk about this that works for both of us and mm -hmm. on that calendar when they're scheduled to work they're scheduled to work but when they're not scheduled to work they're doing the things that give them joy. They're doing the things that fill their buckets. So whether that's, you know, exercising, taking walks, making sure they're going to, you know, individual appointments for their family members, doing the caregiving they need to do for others and for themselves. When they work, they work. And when they don't, they don't. And they let the chips fall where they may because they know they're doing a really great job. This is something that was taught to me many, many years ago by amazing leaders who said, I'm here when I'm here, I'm doing the best that I can, and I'm going to trust that I'm not going to get fired for doing my very best work. And you know what? They didn't get fired and neither did I. So it's just a framework to think about. But again, if you don't have people in your life telling you either through mentorship or leaders that you're doing a great job, it's incumbent on you to go find those people, get them in your life to boost you up. I just have to say that in order to do this, in order to really be confident, you have to be willing to know that in some cases, this organization may not be right for me. Mm -hmm. They may test me time and time again. And guess what? If you're doing amazing work, you're going to have opportunities outside that organization. No job is forever. You either get fired or you quit. That's the nature of work. So if you're at a place that is testing your boundaries and burning you out, guess what? It's time to go. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but it's time to work on that plan. This is capitalism. You are the CEO of your own lives. So if you're getting tested and it's exhausting and you're eating breakfast from your toddler's plate every morning, there is no way you can be fueled to do great work physically or cognitively it's time to get a new job. Sorry, Karina, that's just how it is. I have to say, I feel a little personally attached <laughs> to the whole eating eating my toddler's breakfast thing because were you in my kitchen this morning? I know it happens, but it can't happen every day. It cannot no. happen every day. You cannot sustain yourself mentally or physically. You won't have enough energy, and nobody can make that choice to eat a better breakfast or to to move or to think or to sleep. Nobody can do that except for you, not your boss. Boss is not going to come in and say, you know what? I think you need a few more hours of sleep and actually carve out that space. That is wholly unrealistic. That is insanity to think that in the whole course of capitalism, tomorrow it's going to change and your boss is going to be like, how's your work life balance? That's just not going to happen. I prefer to deal in reality. And the most successful people I know in this world are the CEOs of their own lives. Mm -hmm. And they're willing to take a risk. They're willing to say, I'm going to get seven hours of sleep. And if I get fired, so be it. And it turns out that in the time you show up, when you get better sleep, you actually work better. Yes. That's how it goes. But again, I can't coach or convince anybody of this. Only you can take that risk in your own life. I think the research supports that as well. When we've seen pilots of shorter working hours or alternative ways of working, particularly when we're, again, personalizing that employee experience mm -hmm. and allowing people to work at the times when they're personally most productive, Obviously, this isn't an option in every industry. This isn't always something that can be done, but where it can, learning how to work with that individual and giving them the opportunity to have that ownership 
over their work lives has been proven time and again to result in greater outcomes, not only for the individual, but also for the organization and certainly improvements in retention and engagement and all of these critical areas that we know business leaders are looking at. Really well said. And I think your point about how people may not have control is a good one. There are a lot of people who work at rigorous paces on with rigorous schedules, and they may feel more constrained. But if you are listening to the sound of my voice, that's not you. You have more freedom and flexibility than you know. We all have privilege. We all have opportunities that are given to us because we're naturally talented or for whatever reason. And if you have even a drip of privilege, you have a responsibility to be brave for yourself. And guess what? When you are brave for yourself, you are modeling behaviors for others within the sound of your voice. So it only makes sense that if you can hear me right now, you have the opportunity to test this. So if you need a little extra sleep, take it. If you need better nutritional opportunities, if you need to eat a lunch, eat a lunch. I laugh at that because back in the day, my dad had a lunch every day, right? And so many of us don't. But if you hear my voice, Try eating lunch. Do it today. Do it tomorrow. See what happens. Seriously, the more privilege that you have, the more opportunity and responsibility you have to model good behaviors for others. So take a risk on yourself and show others how it's done. 